Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to discuss timelines. Now in grade 12 you're going to do a section called annuities and many children confuse timelines to annuities. Timelines you would use them specifically when you have no fixed payment. So in other words you randomly pay when you have, you take out when you need but there's no consistent payment and there is no fixed interest rate which means that the interest rate can go up it can go down it's not consistent so these are the two things you look for when you are doing a timeline it can either be one of them or both of them it doesn't need to always work together but the main thing is that you notice the payments are not consistent or the interest rate is not consistent now the trick to doing timelines is to stop whenever there's a change. As soon as you see a change, you stop. Alright, let's take the following example. 10,000 Rand is deposited into a savings account. So we know we're going to start with 10,000 Rand. Okay, it says two years later. 14,500 is added to the account. So what does that mean? It means after two years, I'm going to add 14,500. Then it says five years after, now look, this one is a trick. Five years after the account was opened. Now they are not talking of five years from the two years. In other words, you're jumping to seven years. No. You started here. So if they say five years after you open the account, then it means three years from this point. So if I take from here, two years plus three years is giving me five years. So five years after the account was opened, you took out Six thousand rand. You withdrew it, which means you removed six thousand rand. Now, what they want us to do is calculate the balance at the end of six years. So we have, we started in the beginning. We have a two years, then we have another three years, which gives us five years. Then we have one more year, which will give us our six years. Now when you look at the timeline, we know that we have an interest rate of 7% compounded monthly. When I say you need to stop at every change, which means at this point, we're going to calculate from the beginning till year and we're going to stop. Then we're going to do the adjustment and we're going to continue with the same concept. What you'd notice is that if you stop at every change then you would end up with three different sums now let's do the following we know when we are doing financial maths we're going to start by writing down our pay now at this moment the p is 10000 rand now we know that the interest is 7% which is 7 over 100 but it is compounded monthly so we're going to divide it by 12. I prefer that we write it as a fraction. Now our n because it's compounded monthly we're working from the beginning till two years so we have two and then it's compounded monthly so it's 12. 2 times 12 will give us 24. Okay now you're going to do your formula just as you have been doing it previously you write down your formula and substitute what you have. That would give us A is equal to 24. What you would notice is that I put the entire decimal. What you should be used to is that there's an answer button on your calculator. So at the next 
point where we are now going to add 14,500. Now look what we are doing. We're going to again work with our pain. P-A-I-N. But what is our P for this line? Our P for this line is going to be our A of the previous amount plus 14,500. Now if you're using the answer button on your calculator, you will be more accurate. You must start getting used to using that answer button. Now our P is We don't know our A, but our I is going to be the same as the previous one because the interest rate didn't change. So our I is 7 over 1200. Now, what is your N? From here to the next point, we had a 3 year gap. So we have 3 years times 12 because they said compounded monthly, which will give us 36. Now you're going to do the formula again. So we have A is equal to P 1 plus I to the power of N and you're going to simply substitute. Now what you must get used to is, you see this P, in your calculator it's already stored. So you must start using that answer button. You mustn't retype in this 25,998, 06. It must simply be already in your calculator and you must be using your calculator. That would give you 32,058 rand 67 cents. Again, notice that if you are not going to get into the habit of using your answer button, you'd have to round off to much more. Okay. Now, what's the next step? The next step they're telling us is that they have removed or taken out 6,000 rand. Remember we started in the beginning. After two years, they added 14,500. Then in the question they had said after five years, they had removed 6,000 rand. But we know that we're removing the 6,000 rand until the end. It's not going to be three years or five years or six years because we know the timeline tells us that from this point till the end is only going to be one year. So now we're starting again. We are going to subtract 6,000. Again, I'm emphasizing, use your answer button on your calculator. We're going to do our pain again. Our P is now 26,000. We don't know our A. But our I is still the same. It's 7 over 1,200. Our N. What is our N? We know that the time frame from the 6,000 till the end of the 6 years is only 1 year. We're going to times it by 12, which will give us 12. Now we go back to our formula. You're going to use this P. But remember again, it is on your calculator. So what do we have? We have 26,053 rand, open brackets, 1 plus 7 over 1,200 to the power of 12. But you're going to get used to using your answer button. So you're going to press answer, which would immediately have this 26,000. Open brackets, 1 plus 7 over 1,200 to the power of 12. Now, since this is our final answer, we can round off, which will give us 27,937 rand, 10 cents. Now, when you're doing a timeline, you must work in your page such that you do each step by step. You don't need to do it left and right as I had done it. You can do it under one another on your page. So your timeline basically can run this way. So that you do your first adjustment, you do your second adjustment, you do your third adjustment. If you are not comfortable with that, you can do your timeline as I had done it, but on your workbook, you do each one underneath. So you'd first do this, then you'll do the second step, then you do the third step. You must be able to tell the difference between this year's work and next year's, and the main thing is, they are either no fixed payments or they are no fixed interest rate. 
Thank you for watching.